All right, so we got the Mavic 3 Classic. I literally just got this drone like a week before the Mavic 3 Pro came out, so I guess I kind of missed out on the whole triple camera setup, but honestly, the Classic is already good as is, and honestly, this Hasselblad sensor is incredible, so let's take this thing for a flight. Alrighty guys, so it has been a minute since I have posted a video. I know I haven't been super active the past few months, but I do appreciate your guys' support. I will say within the past few months, our numbers have really been doing well, especially the past few videos. And it really looks like you guys have been liking a lot of the tech videos and the camera videos. So definitely more of that to come. But pretty much some of the reasons of why I've been off for the past few months is mainly just because I have been focusing on college work. And yes, I am done with my junior year of college and one more year until I graduate uh, with my computer science degree. So I'm really excited for that. But since the semester is over, I kind of just want to take some time, kind of just get out, travel a bit more and kind of just come back to the roots. So right now we are on the north side of Lake Tahoe. This is actually one of the first few times that I've actually come to the north side of Tahoe because usually the past few times that you guys see me in Tahoe is usually like a Donner Lake or somewhere near the south of Lake Tahoe. So today is kind of the first day where we're kind of trying something new, something different. And obviously I definitely do want to get back into creating and all that stuff. So let us get into today's video. All right guys, so for today's video, I have been waiting to make this one for a while. And to be a bit more specific, probably like almost half a year. I haven't been this excited for a new product in a long time. So uh, let's do a little bit of unboxing so far. When you don't make a video in a while, it kind of just get rusty on the unboxing stuff. So, so you open? Or maybe not. I don't know. Should we? <sighs> Unboxings are difficult. <laughs> Pretty much what we have inside of this box is indeed brand new Panasonic Lumix S5 2X. And for those who may not remember, I actually did pick up the Lumix S5 pretty much at the end of 2021. It was kind of one of the best cameras given its price range. Mainly it was like the Canon R5, the Sony A7S III, like those were the cameras that were really giving you that amazing 10 bit 42 color space and that dynamic range that you can easily get with that camera. But the Lumix S5 was one of those few cameras that could give you that level of quality that some of the $4,000 cameras were giving you guys. However, the biggest reason as to why people weren't really talking about it was mainly because of its autofocusing system. But that all changed in January of this year in 2023 when Panasonic announced both the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II and the Mark II X. And pretty much the biggest change to these cameras is in the autofocusing system. It is finally adapting the new version known as PDA for otherwise, you know, in its full name, face detect autofocus. So in this one, it is a lot more accurate. I would still say that Canon and Sony are definitely still probably top one, top two, but I would definitely say that Lumix has stepped up in terms of its PDA. But of course, I wanna do some testing myself since I wanna get my hands on this. And when Panasonic unveiled their announcement for the Lumix S5 II and the 2X, I pretty much sold my initial S5, like literally within the same week. Like I literally put it up online, sold it, and have been waiting for so long just to get my hands on a B camera. One of the biggest reasons as to why I wanted to make this video is not only obviously to kind of show you guys I am upgrading from the initial S5 to the S5 2X, but also kind of just to talk about both the 2 and the 2X and probably the reason as to why this camera might just be the best camera to get, especially if you are a current content creator or if you are someone who is aspiring to get into the filmmaking side of things. Like if you're someone who is first starting out as a content creator, you, know, you are working on social media platforms, YouTube, other things as well. But if you do wanna get making into short films and documentaries and even possibly independent films and client work, even bigger production films, like this is one of those cameras that is such a good place to start off in terms of getting a really good image but you're also getting great video features as well. So some of you guys may be wondering why did I sell my initial Lumix S5 and go for the S5 2X? Now, there are obviously quite a few reasons as to why I like the S5 2X better. Again, you are getting features like being able to record to an external SSD, you are getting great internal codecs, but the biggest reason as to why I sold my initial S5 was pretty much one of the bigger reasons why no one even talked about the S5 in the first place, and that was due to not having a good autofocusing system. And I will say when I initially got my hands on the S5, the autofocus seemed to be pretty good, 
like I never really ran into a lot of issues that made me feel like I had to get rid of it. But that kind of changed, especially in mid to late 2022. The way how I really figured out about the autofocusing issue was especially when I was inside buildings and in not well controlled lighting environments. Like if you're inside an environment that's not well lit or you don't really have a whole lot of lighting, that's when the camera really struggles to figure out the difference between the subject and the background. For those that have been on my channel for the past year, you guys may know that last year I did post a video of us moving into our new place. And as you guys can tell, within our new place, we still have not built our backyard. Again, it's been like a year since we moved in. Um, hopefully we're starting to try and figure that out within the next few months of how we want to set everything up because we definitely want to get this stuff done. But my mom has been working on her plant garden. She's literally been obsessed with this project for like the past like two to three months at this point. But at least now with the S52X and especially with this plant garden being built, I just say that let's get some b-roll. But even though we did get some quick b-roll of the plant garden right behind me, I definitely want to take this camera out, kind of test out in different situations. So I have decided that I want to head down towards downtown Sacramento and get some really cool footage there. And we're going to be bringing along Krivi for the ride to kind of help me film some of the stuff with the S52X and really just test out the camera, see what kind of footage we can get and just kind of get my overall opinion of what I think about the S52X. So let's head to downtown. So when it comes to our setup that we used for the S52X, we had the 20 to 60 kit lens. We had two filters, the Tiffin Black Satin One filter and the Peter McKinnon VND, the Black Edition filter. As for microphone, we did have the Sennheiser MKE 400 Gen 2, and we did have a switch pod as pretty much a vlog tripod, but also something we can keep on the ground while filming. So when it comes to some of the photo features that we have on the S52X, one of them being is that this camera can actually take a 96 megapixel shot. So technically internally, it's a 24.2 megapixel sensor, but because this camera does have IBIS, the sensor can actually go to different areas within the IBIS location and it can actually get a high res shot. So since right now we're in front of the Capitol, we can actually test it out with the S52X and kind of see how it looks. And also one thing is that if you are going to be using the high res mode, um, you do need to have the camera stabilized. Otherwise, you're probably not going to get that great of a shot. So best thing is to have a tripod or something stable that you can keep it on. And then that way it'll turn out pretty well. So even though the S52X is definitely geared as a video centric camera, it is definitely very possible to make this a good photo camera as well. All right, so we have the SSD attached here. Once we go to ProRes, now a lot more of the options show up. So we do have 4K capability because without the SSD, you can only do uh, internal 1080p. So it is nice it can go up. So you can pretty much go all the way up to 5.8K, up to 30 frames per second. So that is a really nice feature. But for me, I like to have it on 5.8K, 24 frames, 422HQ, because I do like to shoot 24 frames per second and having that 422 capability definitely gives it the most color variety that you can get. So I guess we can just get a lot more shots here around the Capitol and just test out to see how it looks with S52X. So right now we do have the Atomist Ninja 5 Plus on top of the Panasonic Lumix S52X and right now we can record in 12-bit linear raw and we are having capabilities such as recording in 4K and 5.9K so you definitely do get a lot more versatility with this so if you do want the best uh, chroma subsampling with 422 and if you do want to get a bit more than 10-bit it is possible to pretty much kind of overclock it in a sense uh, with an Atomist Ninja 5 and being able to get things like 12-bit linear raw. Right now we're just going to get some tests I know it's like really bright right now but we will test it out to see how it looks. So taking a deep 
deeper dive into the Lumix S52X, when it comes to the specs that it offers, it does have a full frame 24.2 megapixel sensor. It does have a dual UHS-2 card slot. When it comes to the port, it does have a microphone port as well as a headphone jack port. It does offer a full size HDMI slot, a USB type C slot as well. But I would say that the biggest notable change between the initial S5 and the S52 and the 2X is definitely when it comes to the top of the camera, which does house its internal fan. And the nice thing is that because the internal fan is placed on the top of the camera, it is actually circulating a lot of the air um, pretty much right on top of the sensor. So pretty much any heat that is generated by the sensor, all of that heat is getting dissipated right out of the top of the camera. So Honor Blue did recently make a new accessory for the Panasonic Lumix S5 II and the 2X. can record to the SanDisk ProBlade SSD mag. And since we just wrapped up on the test shoot for the Lumix S5 II X, I definitely want to talk about the pros and cons that I've noticed with this camera and to talk about the things that I really enjoyed to work with this one, but also some of the negatives that I've found. Um, since I do find it important to talk about both. Definitely, if Panasonic is listening, I hope that this would be some good feedback. So starting off with the pros list, the first one is in fact the value when it comes to price to performance. I've been saying this as soon as I've been testing out with this camera and everything that you're getting is just so worth it in my opinion for how much you're paying um, because pretty much you are being able to purchase a Sony A7S III, a Sony FX3, an R5, but within half the price. Like that is how good this camera is. And I have seen a lot of people actually do side-by-sides with cameras like the Sony A7S III. A lot of people actually prefer the image quality from the Panasonic Lumix S5 II and the 2X because in terms of low light capabilities and its noise reduction, it does actually tend to do a much nicer job. Um, it's not like a complete night and day difference. I will say again, the, the Sony A7S III's footage is beautiful and it is a masterpiece for its own reason. And one of the biggest reasons as to why people buy that camera, it really just goes to show that this camera can really uh, compete against some cameras that cost twice the price. Next up on the list, when it comes to its menu system, it is fairly easy, customizable, and it is overall beginner friendly. Um, I will say it is slightly easier than the Sony menu system that you would see on things like the a7S III. I will still say that probably Canon's menu system is easily the most beginner friendly. Now next up on the list is definitely an exclusive to the the S52X and not the S52 is when it has internal ProRes. Like this is something that I never really imagined even before this camera came out that any camera would technically have internal ProRes. But the fact that we do have a mirrorless camera that has internal ProRes and the fact that once you connect a USB-C SSD into the camera, the fact that you can go up to 5.8K, 30 frames per second, 422 HQ, like it's honestly just mind blowing to see that within a camera. One of the bigger differences between the S5 II and the initial S5 is the fact that we can actually record all I, um, actually scratch that because I only believe it's the S5 II X that can record in all I, whereas the S5 II can only do long op, um, which is the lower file size. And you can actually pay for that firmware upgrade. Now, I don't believe that firmware upgrade is gonna give you every single thing that the S52X has, but it will give you a lot of the important ones, especially if you wanna do external RAW, such as having it connected to something like the Atomos Ninja 5 or the 5 Plus, where you can get like 12-bit RAW. And next up is USB-C SSD recording. Now, this is a feature that I think a lot of cameras need to start adapting because I think it just makes sense. Like, especially we live in a day and age that, you know, podcasts and a lot of long form uh, content has become a lot more mainstream, especially if you want to start getting into documentation documentary shooting. And I definitely think that the S52X is going to be a sleeper in the documentary industry because the fact that this camera is giving you relatively the same incredible footage that you can get out of the S1H, which is indeed a Netflix approved camera, which a lot of people have used for Netflix productions. If you truly do want to record in 422 HQ with ProRes, that is something where you don't necessarily need to worry about not having enough storage because you can literally have that two terabyte uh, SSD plugged in into the camera and it will work perfectly fine. And of course, one of the biggest updates to the S5 II and the 2X is implementing PDAF or otherwise known as phase detect autofocus. Easily one of the biggest improvements that Panasonic has made to the Lumix S5 II and the 2X. And one of the biggest issues that was there with the initial Lumix S5 was its autofocus performance because there was a lot of pulsing that was happening within the camera and it just wasn't very confident in what it was picking up in its subject. I will say that it's definitely not as good as Canon or Sony's. I will say Canon and Sony 
are still some of the best, if not the best in terms of autofocus performance, but this new PDAF system definitely has potential to become much better later on. And I wouldn't be surprised if Panasonic uh, tends to implement the PDAF system into future cameras, such as the upcoming S1H accessor. But now let us get into the cons with the Lumix S52X. I would say that the first biggest con is technically because the S52 and the 2X are very similar to the initial S5 that came out, it does have its same issue when you are trying to record in slow motion, especially if you're trying to do things like 4K60. It does have a 1.5 times crop into the sensor, which is the exact same thing that was with the Lumix S5. So if you are someone who does want to utilize the entire sensor when you are recording slow motion, that is something where this camera can't necessarily do that. Now, another thing is that at the time of making this video, the camera is currently updated to version 1.1, which is its first firmware update for the S52X. And it does take a while for this camera to turn on. It does take about anywhere between six to eight seconds, which may not seem like a lot, but comparing it to a lot of other cameras, a lot of cameras turn on within like two to three seconds max. Pretty much for our last con on my list comes down to its IBIS. And it is something where a lot of people have talked a lot of positive things with the IBIS performance from the S52 and the 2X. Personally, I think that the IBIS is just way too strong. I think there are some things about having a weak IBIS, but also I think there's definitely issues about having a very strong IBIS because if you are going to be working with a lot of telephoto lenses, I will say having a strong IBIS is much more preferred and you're not gonna really deal with a lot of issues. But for someone like me who likes to shoot from a lot of wide angle lenses, it is something where you can definitely notice within the corners of getting a little bit of that jello effect or you can get a lot of wobbles in the corner. It is something where if Panasonic can work on it, much appreciated for sure. <laughs> for the Panasonic S52X, I've had this camera for relatively a few weeks, close to a month, and I've gotta be honest, this has been one of my favorite cameras to really take out, to really test, and push it to its limits. And again, I think this camera is just super versatile. I think this is gonna be such a great pickup for a lot of people. I feel like the only thing that would make a lot of these mirrorless cameras for video shooters just completely perfect would be to have internal ND filters. I think a lot of people have been talking about that now because if we can implement internal ND filters into cameras like this, I think that will pretty much set it for mirrorless cameras in general and what would make a lot of videographers switch to mirrorless cameras. And with that, you guys, that is gonna do for us on this video talking about the Panasonic Lumix S52X. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, definitely leave it down in the comments below. More than happy to respond to you guys there. So make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.